Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, you okay. Well, I'll, I'll go ahead and take them from you. I'm going to give you back this pretty picture for your scrapbook. Yeah. Mr. Bobaloo's going to get you going here in this here jail. Well, once again, I like your jail stripes, ma'am. Absolutely. You got some uh, cool looking jail stripes. Well, thank you. Yeah. I don't know what jail that's from. I bet it's better than this one. Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the only meat we've been having lately is possum. Oh. <laughs> and I'm telling you one thing, just feels good. I can't even, I, I'm not even going to say. But we have a lot of veggies, though. Oh, man, we love our veggies. Absolutely. When you're out of the stocks, for sure. Exactly. I'll wait until you get out of the way. Oh, you go right away. Okay. All right, folks. Now, what do we got here? Well, I think we got the 1045 jail props. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> Good job, Mr. Bobby. I always goofing around. But anyway, even when I'm in jail. <clears throat> now ladies, I heard what you ladies done last night in town. Shame on all of you. Yes, you were dancing on tables at the hotel, I hear tell. <laughs> and you were exposing the skin of your uh, ankles, and you still are. <laughs> well, except for you, ma'am. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're the one that obeyed the order by the sheriff. Thank you. <laughs> well, anyway. Now, which one of you girls was actually dancing on the, uh, well, piano? She did it. You did it. <laughs> Do you know what they call that piano now? No. They call it firewood. Firewood. <laughs> oh, my, my, my. They said you were kicking that piano every which way but loose. Yes, they said, uh, well, they were saying, we hope when she gets home, she don't kick her husband like that. <laughs> Oh my my my! Howdy, uh, anyway, uh, the next the next thing on the thing is uh, who was swinging down the chandelier? <laughs> she was. She was. <laughs> oh, pretty good at it. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> you know what the owner said? No. Uh, the owner says if you don't pay your bill, he's gonna keep all those uh, unmentionables up there. <laughs> okay, but anyway. Man, I heard you got three donkeys stuck on the third floor of the hotel. Is that right? Oh, my, my, my. You stayed at that distillery too long, huh? Shame on you. But anyway, okay, let's get down to basics. Who knows the name Henry Flagler? You've heard the yeah. name? Yeah, there's a call in here. You've heard the name? Yeah, really. Henry Flagler built half of this town. He built, uh, I mean, I can go on and on. There's a, quite a few places, quite a few. Anyway, one thing he did build was this jail. That's right, $10,000. Why did he build this jail? Because what they did in town, they left the jail across the street from his hotel. He took him three years to build, and he finally found out and said, where'd that jail come from? Well, he got a little upset. He says, can you close that jail, build another one down the road a mile, mile and a half? They said, sir, we don't have the money for that. He goes, I do. You give him $10,000. That, uh, that commissioner looked and says, where do you want that jail? <laughs> money talks, <laughs> but it don't sing and dance and it can't walk. <laughs> but anyway, that's the way it went. So, they got this built, it's got Victorian trim around it, glass in the windows over here on this side, and you even got a porch. Now, I never heard of a jail with a porch, have you? Me neither. Well, anyway, I'll put it to you this way. People come up here thinking that's a hotel wanting to rent a room. That's right. One third mile in front of us is the train station. People getting off these trains left and right, morning, noon, and night, looking back and saying, 
Well, you know, Fred, that looks like a jail, uh-huh. Looks like a hotel, too. Two newlywed couples came by last night. That's right, it looks just like you two. Well, guess what? They said, son, you got a room here? They said, oh, Sheriff Perry came out and said, this ain't no hotel. They said, oh, sir, we thought this might be a hotel. Are you those newlyweds I heard about? Yes, sir, that'd be us. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, come on in. I'll fix you up with a little sweet. They said, so we're going to take a rain check on that if you don't mind. <laughs> anyway, are you ready to go to jail? Yep. <laughs> All ready. Come on, folks, let's go. I don't want to keep you standing there, so don't no. worry. <laughs> He has never missed a meal. <laughs> now over here we got uh, Mama Boo. That'll be made three and a half years ago. I kidnapped alligators. So now that I've saved his life, Anybody want a picture real quick? No? No? Picture? Well, I'm picturing no. the mic in the jail. No? Okay. Come on. No? No, she's in. No, no. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you want one? Come on in. Come on in, young lady. I hear you. Alrighty. <laughs> We're going to try to keep her for a while. <laughs> Are you ready? Yes. <laughs> if I don't take the picture, you can keep her? <laughs> no. You want my camera? <laughs> well, we can talk business. <laughs> <laughs> we can talk business. If you make big. an offer like that, you might just be careful. Shazam, I hear you, sir. Okay. You ready? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh my. All right. Well, I guess we're going to get a release her. <laughs> get okay. Yeah. He didn't have enough money. Yeah. Ah, he didn't, the money. He didn't, he didn't yeah, see that. look out, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah we'll, we'll, we'll do that too. <laughs> oh my, my, my. Yeah. Okay, let's go over here underneath this. Uh, 300 plus year old uh, water oak. And let's talk about it. Beautiful. Okay, y'all in the shade? Yeah. All right, now folks, this right here, this, this tree is over 300 years old. And back in the day, uh, 80 years ago, maybe 100, right? They took that cage, brought it over here. They put a rope on top of the cage, throw it over one of these branches, which 80, 100 years ago, these branches were a lot lower. And there wasn't many branches stemming out so far to block the sun. So they'd haul that prisoner up 15 feet for about 24 hours. You know, between the hot sun and the mosquitoes, that ain't a picnic. Nowadays, a prisoner's got to put up with uh, cable TV and AC. Follow me. Oh, oh man, you're better. I was waiting for the old Susanna. Oh, I hear you. But I tell you, I'm working on that one. Thank you. Okay. Okay, come on up here. Stay by the stairs, if you will, folks. Thank you very much. All righty. So what do we got here? We, uh, some people call it the gallows. Now what I call it is a hangout corner. A lot of men been dying to hang out here for years. Okay, so anyway, you see that one name up there, Charles Powell, February 28, 1908. I see you got your parting cards. You're okay. Sheriff, you're okay. All right, you go right ahead, folks. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so anyway, so what did Charles Powell do? What he did, he shot a man. 
in defense of uh, sticking up for his wife, this man was going around town spreading false rumors about his wife. Vicious rumors. He was on the take. You know what that means? On the take? Okay. So he was on the take. He'd done this. And then uh, one night, Charles Powell decided to go into town and have a draft. You know, one of the main W drafts at the saloon, we'll say. <laughs> he was standing in there, and all of a sudden, a uh, man come up and said, Charles, that man over there is the man talking about your wife. He goes, oh, thanks. He walked over to him, and they started talking. He said, all right, and then they started arguing. And that man pushed Charles Powell. Charles Powell drew his 44 as well, he ended it. They arrested him for murder, put him in that jail cell there. They put him in there for 30 days. Now, why 30 days? Well, I'll tell you why 30 days, okay? 30 days because the town's got time enough to let other towns, cities, and even states know about this uh, ex uh, hanging that's going to go on, you know? Yes, this hanging just going to go on. Are you joining us, folks? Oh, okay, no, it's okay. I was waiting for it. No, 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 you're fine. You can stand there. No, no, I don't mind if you're standing there for an hour. Okay. Thank you. No, okay, you're welcome to listen to me anyway if you want to. Okay, so anyway, the thing is, well, these other towns, states, and everything else, they had 30 days to get here. Because 30 days, they say, Yo, man, we're going to have a swinging time here in 30 days. Come on, spend your money. That's what it was all about. 30 days later, guess what? They came. 120 men showed up. Sheriff Perry standing out here talking with them all. He said, well, boys, my deputy's about to bring this man out to face the uh, truth. And uh, my deputy's going to bring him out. He goes, hang on a minute. He looked at his watch. He goes, I said, hang on. He said, my deputy seemed to be a little late, too. I'll be right back. He walks inside that cell. When he got inside, guess what? The deputies are looking at him like, what? He said, deputies, didn't I tell you never to be late? They said, sir, you told us last week it's against the law to hang an unconscious man. He is unconscious. Sheriff Perry says, I told you that last week. <laughs> nice sheriff. Huh? Yeah, nice sheriff. Well, anyway, what happened next was this. <clears throat> Sheriff Perry said, well, I got, I got 120 men out there right now pumping revenue in this town. Go you go get me a wood plank, a plank of wood, three and a half foot wide, seven foot long, and some rope, and you get back here in a hurry. And they did. They came back. They went inside that cell. They put that big plank board against the wall, picked up Charles Powell, unconscious, of course, put him against that plank and tied him to it. That's right, tied him right to it. And Sheriff Perry looks at him and says, well, boys, looks like he's standing up now. Real nice sheriff, huh? Yeah. <laughs> well, then he says, boys, carry him outside. They carried him outside. They brought him all the way out. And they brought him out to right here. When he got here, they carried him up 13 steps all the way up to the top. They got up to the top, you know what happened then? They started prepping him for the hanging, right? They tied his hands to his side. They put the hood over his head. They put that noose around his neck, folks. Oh, my goodness gracious. And I'll tell you what happened right after that. Oh, boy, woo! What you talking about? He come down like grease lightning, woo! Yes, sir. He come down so quick, the rope broke. <laughs> when that rope broke in that, guess what? He floated out here on top of that board like he was on a magic carpet. Boom! <laughs> Landed right there. Charles Powell woke up. He wasn't unconscious anymore. He, I mean, his eyes were big as apples. Sheriff Perry standing here saying, Good morning to you, Charlie boy. You startled me. He said, Deputy, go get this man a brand new rope right now and bring it back quick. And I want this rope to be something he'll be proud of this time now. Nice guy, man. They come back seven minutes later with a new rope. Guess what? Charles Powell's already dead. How'd he die? He's alive and kicking at one moment there, laying on the board. 
His eyes big as apples. What happened? His neck he had broke. A heart attack. No. no, no, heart attack is my number one popular answer <laughs> for three and a half years now. <laughs> but it ain't the answer. But it's the most popular one. And what you said? Neck broke. Oh, I don't oh, know. Neck broke. Yeah. No. You said the same thing. Nail and board? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Deputy Sean? No. No, you said neck broke. How did he break his neck? When it when he, he initially it. fell, and then yeah. and it just snapped. He, snapped. he got so, it. Yeah. He got it. Snapped. Yeah. Very good, sir. Very good, yes. <laughs> yes, sir. That's what happened. <laughs> when that rope snapped, it jerked his neck and snapped his neck. It rendered him at that at that time now, he was just paralyzed. Within the seven minutes waiting on that new rope to come, his neck just finished going snap, crackle, pop, and that was it. They said he had a smile on his face, though. <laughs> yeah. So he must have got on board of one of those 747s and went straight north. That's right. Okay. <laughs> I love to throw that one in. Okay, folks. Now, Sheriff Perry hung him a second time, though. Sheriff Perry would have got arrested because the law states double jeopardy act of God law. You don't swing a man twice for the same crime. And the act of God law is, hey, if he survived that first one, you let him go home. That's right. Okay. Now, are you folks breaking out of jail? Yep. I thought <laughs> you were. Well, they all left. We broke out. Shame on you two. Okay, free. I hear you. Folks, we're about to go inside the jail now. It's a little cold in there. So bundle up. Number two, the ladies' jail cells are right there on the left as we walk in the door. They got buckets in themselves. I think you know what they're for. Need not say. We arrested a woman last night. You know what she called them buckets? I got to tell you what she said. She called them the uh, poop poop a doo Her name was Betty Boop. <laughs> Follow me, folks. Okay, last one in, if you don't mind, close the door. Thank you. in a giant tub of water and that was it and this is true history now me being a trustee I got out I, I get out twice a month take a bath they call me Roma <laughs> that's I'm just kidding there. but anyway the thing is they had no glass in the windows no glass in the windows caused a problem it was called sickness and disease 
One third of all these prisoners, well, they died in here because of that. <clears throat> Sheriff Perry somehow would call a doctor. It seemed like he called him too late. Or the, hor the horse and buggy the doctor had didn't have enough of horsepower to get here quick enough. I don't know. But anyway, that was the case. But usually when he got here, he'd just sign a death certificate and be done with it. That was it. That was a bad time in our history. It really was. Now, this picture behind me is the Sim Jackson execution. Now, Sim Jackson, I don't know if you heard that name before. Samuel Jackson, they call him too. But Sim Jackson, he goes by. He went by. <clears throat> him and his wife had an argument one night in early... Well, let's see, probably was uh, late 1905. Probably December around there. Uh, that's my estimate, educated guess. But it escalated. And all of a sudden, he took his straight razor shaving knife and he cut her head off. Ooh. Yes. Straight razor shaving knife. Now, that poor woman died within the first four seconds. She bled out. No, she, her spirit left her body and she was in good shape. She didn't care about anything else. Is it tight? Thank you. And uh, so, anyway, he took off. So, for two months, Sheriff Perry trailed him, finally found him in Tallahassee. That's right. Now, February 9th, 1906, there he is, holding flowers and uh, got a new suit on. How did he become to get all this stuff? I'll tell you how. These psychiatrists, they asked the interviewer, they want to know what was going on inside his head. He let them know, and they gave him a suit of clothes and flowers. So, <clears throat> now he's up there saying goodbye to the whole, everybody. I'll see y'all in heaven. Oh yeah, I guess, but we, you never know. But anyway, the thing is, Sheriff Perry says, okay, boys. Boom, they hit that lever right outside here. He went through that trap door. He never broke his neck. Now why? Body weight, maybe. The way they put the knot in the rope. Mm -hmm. Just don't know. It just happened, but it gave him anywhere from five to 30 more minutes of air, of life. <clears throat> so these psychiatrists, the one that interviewed him earlier, started asking him questions as he's hanging. He's actually moving his fingers, yes and no, for about, yeah, about 10 minutes. And then at the end of 14 minutes, they checked his pulse again, and he was gone. That was it. Yeah, crazy, ain't it? It's a crazy world we live in. And it still is. Okay, now, what do we got over here? This is called maximum security. No, Call solitary confinement. Okay, but anyway, solitary confinement. Men would go in there from one to thirty days for punishment. And let me just say this: they can't see their hand in front of their face. I'm not going to tell you all the story about it because at the end of it, I go roar. <laughs> I do it when the kids are in here. <laughs> kids love me. <laughs> Follow me, folks. kitchen now it now it does not make the headline news having 600 cups of coffee a day in this jail about 600 at least up to 600 cups a day was going through here coffee beans were donated there was one of the prisoners always grinding coffee well not always but a lot you know, grinding coffee beans. It was free. Sheriff Perry loved the uh, prisoners uh, hyped up a little bit on caffeine because they do a little more for them, you know what I mean? Okay, but anyway, we got a table full of beans here. Now, we do eat a lot of beans here in jail. What, what can I say? 
We eat so many beans here, let me just say this. We've never had a gas shortage. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Now, has anyone ever heard of hardtack? Hardtack is a, the British Navy in the late 1500s came up with this recipe. Flour, water, and salt, bake it in the oven, bring it out, let it lay out 48 hours, and it's hard as a rock. Hard as a rock. Guess what? You can store this forever. This will stay good forever. Any military in here? Okay, what branch, sir? Army. Army, well, thank you for your service. Yeah. But anyway, military use this, <clears throat> which you, you'll probably know already about that. But anyway, Civil War. No, no, they used it during World War I. I know one. I didn't participate in all of this civil war. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. He's from the mountain of youth, doesn't he? Yeah, that's a, exactly right. You went there for a while. Now you want to why he wants to get rid of me. Uh -huh. yeah. uh -huh. So anyway, yes, during the Civil War, North and the South had this. The, the soldiers put in a cup of water, 15 minutes, you're eating it. Okay, but... The thing is, they used it during um, the uh, the Mayflower before that in 1620. Pilgrims sailed over for two months over the ocean from England to get the Plymouth Rock. Not one man, woman, or child got hungry at all. They made it. But anyway, what else happened? World War One, Two, uh, even cowboys on the trails would have it on hand. You know, it was just something you could survive with. <clears throat> now, what is this right here? You can look. Dumbwaiter. Dumbwaiter, thank you. <laughs> Very good. Dumbwaiter, of course, is a food elevator, food and drink elevator. You put this stuff on shelves. Hey, let the guard go upstairs. He hears me, he pulls it up, feeds all the prisoners on floor two and three. Okay, now over here, some of my cooking. Yeah. Did you like to see it? My cooking? Yeah, it's good stuff. No, I, I take pride in my cooking. <laughs> a few rats. A rabbit sausage. Very good. Very good. Yeah. I was thinking about scaring you, and I said, oh, God. What's in this one? Hey, what's in this one? Oh, that's vegetables. Uh, Okay. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's how, how many prisoners were usually in here? Uh, 72. 72? And it was usually full? Oh, oh. Yeah. Exactly. This is the office of the shooter. They have like a typewriter. Yeah, I see that. There's a telephone, huh? It's a, it's a phone. Okay, come on over here. We got a chance that I can give you some more. That's cool. It's all right. They have guns, baby. Yep. Okay, you want to stay there? No, 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 it's okay. Either way. No, 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 I mean, you can see it's not almost good. That yeah. good is. Okay, come on down. Okay, you ready? Yeah, sure. Thank you. This is the parlor. Sheriff Perry's parlor. That's his office. 86% of everything in these two rooms are authentic. The floor you're standing on, for instance. And, now these lights are not authentic. They're, uh, Replicas of what used to be here. Gas. Gas, thank you. Gas lighting. Okay, these two men here, they just wandered in last year. And we have arguments sometimes. They told me to wax away yesterday. I told them, what? No, it's wax on, wax off. <laughs> They're the wax brothers. Okay, now over here, what is this in the corner? Nice chest. Very good, very good, yes. 
This is a nice chest refrigerator. You put the block of ice in top, keeps the whole thing cold. Mm -hmm. Two and a half days later, just do it again, if you want to. Okay, now you see that fireplace there. Now that fireplace is the other side of the other fireplace you see in the office, okay? Double tape fireplace, pretty cool, huh? Yeah. And actually this uh, mantle, it's marble. I don't know why they painted it. Yeah, well, yeah. Okay. You know what I mean? I can, yeah. I'm in construction most of my day. Yeah. Is that the sheriff's wife? Or? No. Okay. That is a 14%. Yeah, we just put her picture up because she's in the same time period. <laughs> <laughs> she's not related. Okay. Yes, no relation. Okay, now folks over to, no, 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 we're not going. <laughs> now right here, this is Sheriff Perry's family. Probably in the 1870s, around that era, okay? That's his father right there. He was six foot six. That's right, he was a Bible teacher and uh, he was a minister. He even put a Bible underneath family picture, and this is true history. It really is. Mm -hmm. And that's his eldest sister, and his baby brother and sister. There's Mama. And that's his other little sister, and there's Sheriff Perry sitting down, 14 and a half years old. Take a look at him real good and see how tall do you think he was? 14, probably six foot. Okay, anyone else? At that time? Oh, he's taller than that. I bet he's, I bet he's six three. Seven. Okay. Seven. Both of you no. guessed around it. He's six one. Okay. He was six foot one. Yeah. And now At his, fourteen. Wow. Right now, see, men back then only grew to be like five five, five seven. Yeah. Yeah. His family apparently was all tall except Mama, uh, and uh, they had to have that European Viking blood or something in them. We don't know what exactly, but it was one or the other. Okay, come on, uh, let me get over here. 17 telephones uh, we had here. 17. That ain't many phones for a whole uh, county, is it? Not really. Well, guess what? If I want to call somebody, I crank that phone. Operator, she get on, you know, she goes, Hey, who are you trying to get? And I said, trying to get the Smith residence, line seven. Thank you. She plugged me in and I'd be talking. But the only bad thing about that is the whole town and county can hear me. And all 17, 16 other phones, they can pick up their receivers and add and go, woo -hoo -hoo. Yeah, truth. Okay. Sheriff Perry Shotgun called it his scattergun one because he put buckshot in it. When you fire a buckshot, it's going to scatter. Same thing with birdshot. But anyway, that's beside the point. As he walked in town with it, though, the people in town call it his scatter gun, too. Why? Because they'd scatter, too. <laughs> <laughs> now, they scattered because they wasn't scared of Sheriff Perry. They knew there was about to be a gun fight. The Sheriff Perry doesn't come in town like that for no reason at all. So they said, we're going to get out of the way. Shoot. Okay. Another thing, too, Sheriff Perry's handwriting was terrible. He would get letters sent back here every day. Nine out of ten letters would get sent back. Henry Flagler, remember him? He came by and said, well, Sheriff, i got a present for you. <laughs> here you go. An Oliver number nine typewriter. $135. Wow. Now, in today's money market, that'd be $3,400, maybe something like that. Yes. Sheriff Perry said, well, I appreciate it so much. And after that day, he never had a letter problem again. <laughs> okay. Now, over here, 1908 fingerprint came from Scotland Yard, England. They mailed one over to Sheriff Perry. He got a hold of this. Nine days, he made his first arrest. <laughs> it just took off like wildfire after that. Now, last but least, what is this? Mail slot. Mail yeah. slot. Very good. Very good. Yes, exactly right. This just came in for Sheriff Perry about an hour ago. I don't know what it is. Ooh, it's ticking here. <laughs> I day off. There you go. I do it eight times a day. And I had a bag full of pockets out one day. <laughs> that was so funny. Well, okay, you ready, folks? Follow me. Oh, hey, last person out. Can you gently close this? Thank you. Oh, come on.
72 prisoners. Lost your sheriff and his family. And anybody who can pay upwards of nine year murders per day, three more days, and maybe 365 days of the these are small stairs for the small feet of the prisoners back there. Careful. Come Can you stand against the wall right there? Thank you. Be careful coming down. Okay. You can go stand right there. Right now? Uh, yeah. Oh God. Right now? Mm -hmm. At least it's finished up. I know it. Yeah, I know it is. Yeah, it's a little blurry. Okay, yeah, folks, can I, get, can I get you all to stand against this back wall? Sure. Wonderful. Oh, okay. That's Sheriff Perry up there. Hi, Sheriff. He ain't talking much today. <laughs> okay, but anyway, folks, before I get to saying anything, please hear this. Don't try to go down those stairs leaving. They're, you know, they're hard coming up and they're dangerous to go down. Go out that door. Right there. Uh -huh. that, that, that's the stairs you stood by outside. Okay. So anyway, you can go in here and talk to the prisoners. They're gonna bang on that. Okay. Watch, watch this, watch this. No, hit it. Not yet, not yet. Let them hit it first. <laughs> no, go ahead, hit it, hit it. Thank you. That was for the dumb one. Beat them to it. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> you scared them enough. <laughs> Now, oh, see, so you had the first shot. But I scared the people out of there. I hit it once, they hit it again. Thank you, Doug! Wonderful, wonderful. I love to have fun like that. <laughs> it is so much fun, you can see the people go, wow! <laughs> Well, they did my people that way about three and a half years ago. So they were standing over there. And I looked at that and I says, okay, you want to let the games begin. <laughs> <laughs> and ever since then, I'm a, I'm, I'm a turd. <laughs> oh, okay. So anyway, you can talk with all the guys in here. The last jail cell on the right, down in 1914, the state of Florida ordered Sheriff Perry to put bathrooms in here. That last one on the right used to be a bathroom. You'll see the shower still standing in there, stalled, and the holes cut out in the walls for the rest of the stuff. We'll say the rest of the uh, exercise equipment. <laughs> okay, but anyway, you cannot go up here. It's closed. You well, you can see that already. But uh, you go down this hall, and you'll end up over here on this side. As you do go around, look up into the jail cells. You'll see funny things too. And you can go across the hall. Well, I'll put it this way, the deputy's bedrooms. You might find a couple of them misbehaving. Oh. Yeah, you know, playing poker and drinking some of that Tennessee shine. Oh boy. <laughs> but anyway, uh, the last thing is, is this little room to the left as you walk out of here, you've seen it coming up probably with swinging doors. That room is so much full of so much information. You'll be amazed. Okay, do you have any questions? How long was he sheriff? How many years? He was sheriff 26 years. Um, did he die of natural causes or did they Natural. Well, natural causes. He died in 1919. He was still sheriff at 56 years old of pneumonia. Oh, wow. Uh, yep, yeah, he was sure very old. Was no. there glass up here or was this dark too? I'm sorry? Was there glass? You said downstairs or was it? Oh, any? no glass up here neither. Okay, so it was dark too? Wow. Uh -huh. Oh, well, they had lanterns. Yeah. Okay. As so, far as they the didn't light. have any natural light that came through? No, just during the day. Okay. Like it is now. Okay. Natural light. Okay. Storms. No heat. Yes. Storm. Oh, yes. It, it was rough. Mm -hmm. Now, this right here, folks. Oh, wait, wait, wait for you go. Okay. See this card in my hand? Yeah. Now, get you one of these, okay, when you're leaving. Okay. They're on top of that box over there. 
Okay. And the bottom of that box, you make your own mind up about. I'm not here to panhandle nobody. Okay. But anyway, you sure you don't have any other questions? Anybody? No. Okay. No. Well, Bob Blue's uh, just saying, did you enjoy the tour? We did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, definitely. Well, thank you. Now, folks, I don't know if you're all familiar with TripAdvisor and Google. If you are, if you can give Bob Blue a five-star review. If you like me, I'd appreciate it so much. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, are guns that they use in crime. Yeah, that's really neat that they still have. Like this man on this original. Yes. Yes. Or uh, we're going to exit out the sales to the left. There's a big black door. We're going to exit there, grab the cream colored parking card so Sheriff can see and bring you back. Home. Yeah, check that Again, out. My huh? name is Josephine. Y'all been lovely. Did you have any no, questions you before I let you mm -hmm. run the jail? Maybe so not kill her, so we could have got And then, uh, that's, that's not including the women. There was anywhere between 6 and 13 women here at the time, but it didn't include them in the actual number. I hope you enjoyed this. I certainly did. Um, if you did, I would love if you'd tell my friend, Trip Advisor. And uh, <laughs> other words, uh, enjoy the old channel. All right. Thanks so much. I wonder how small people must have smuggled them in. Or made them, yeah, that's like or a... made them. Yeah. Yeah, somehow. Some of them have gotten smuggled in by women or somebody like that. Or they cut and off or something. Mm -hmm. Or they made them, like you said. Mm -hmm. Wow. Some of them are, yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. 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 Thank you. 